For section 2.3, we will be talking about measures of the location of the data. So the first measure that we're going to talk about is what is called percentile. The kth percentile, denoted here as P subscript K, or P sub K, of a set of data is a value such that K percent of the observations are less than or equal to that value. So um, this percentile will be a value from the data, from the data, or if you're talking about later on, we'll talk about continuous uh, data, and then it may not be an actual point from the data. But in our case, we're talking about discrete data. This will be a point from the data, and K percent of the other data values, the other observations, will be less than or equal to that k, k percentile value. Example 2.7, the graduate record examination, the GRE, uh, is a test required for admission to many US graduate schools. The University of Pittsburgh Graduate School of Public Health requires a GRE score no less than, than the 70th percentile for admission into their human genetics MPH or MS program. So that's a master's of something. Interpret this admission requirement. So this is the key thing right here, the 70th percentile. So that means um, your score must be greater than, must be greater than or equal to seventy percent of the total scores on the GRE. So in other words, if you're going to get into that program, and evidently that would, if that's their requirement, that would change uh, on a yearly basis. So they are comparing your score to everybody else who's taking the GRE or that version of the GRE, and your score must be greater than or equal to 70% of the uh, total scores on that test if you are going to be in the 70th percentile. Another way we measure uh, data and location is what are called quartiles. Quartiles divide data sets into fourths or quarters or four equal parts. The first quartile, uh, and this one is a little bit different. It may or may not be a data value, but the first quartile, Q1, is the value so that 25% of the data values will be below that quartile value. Uh, and 75% of the data values are going to be above it. So you're just dividing your group into four equal parts. The second quartile, Q2, or it's also called the median, is the value so that 50% of the data values are below it and 50% of the data values are going to be above that Q2 value. The third quartile, which we label Q3, is the value so that 75% of the data values are below it and 25% of the data values will be above it. So that seems pretty reasonable. You're dividing your uh, total values into four equal groups and 25%, 25%, 25%, 25%, and these are the divisions of your data. Quartiles, um, quartiles divide the data into quarters. So I've got to fix that typo. Quartiles divide the data into quarters such that 25% of the data is between the minimum value and Q1. 25% of the data will be between Q1 and the median, or Q2. 25% uh, of the data is between the median and Q3, and then 25% of the data is between Q3 and the maximum value. So again, you're just dividing it up into quarters, and one-fourth is going to be in each of those groups. The interquartile range, uh, which is abbreviated IQR, is going to be equal to Q3 minus Q1. So quartile 3, that value, minus the quartile 1 value. You subtract those, uh, just like for a range, you subtract maximum minus minimum. For interquartile range, you subtract Q3 minus Q1, 
and this is the range of the middle 50% of the observations in your data set because uh, you'll have 25 in each of those two groups. The median of a set of data is the middle value. So if you put them all in order and you find the middle value, that value is the median. We have what is called a five number summary when we deal with uh, values to give us kind of a, a, a rundown of how spread out they are and stuff. Uh, we have in the five number summary, you have the minimum, which is gonna be the lowest data value. You have Q1, which remember separates the bottom 25% from the rest. You have the median, which is the middle value. Um, you have Q3, which separates the bottom 75% from the top 25%. And then you have the maximum. So uh, this is a very generic uh, picture, but it lists these five values. And notice that you've got the 25% in each group. It is not normally going to be uh, all equal spacing like this, because normally we would put this on, uh, on a coordinate graph and then we'd have certain quartiles will be more spread out than other quartiles. Uh, but this is a, just a generic picture of it. Steps for obtaining the five number summary. So if we're gonna do this by hand, the first thing we're gonna do is rewrite the data set from smallest to largest. Then we will observe the smallest value and label that the minimum value. Step three, find the median, which is the second quartile. That's the middle number. So if we have them all arranged, we're just gonna find that middle number. Then in order to find Q1, uh, we basically take the median of that lower half of values. So we found the median, which separates it in half, and then we'll take the median of the lower half to find Q1. Uh, observe the largest value, label that the maximum. And then we're gonna take uh, the median of the upper half of numbers in order to find Q3. So that's how we do it by hand. It's not really too difficult. Uh, there is also a way to do it on a calculator, which we'll take a look at after a bit. Uh, steps for checking for outliers. So first of all, we do have to determine our two quartile one and quartile three um, of the data. Then we compare the interquartile, or compute, I'm sorry, the interquartile range, which is, remember, that's Q3 minus Q1. Then we determine what are called the fences. The fences are used to identify the outliers. So we have a lower fence, which will be on the lower half of our data, or lower part of our data. We have an upper fence, which will be on the upper part of our data, abbreviated LF and UF. To find the lower fence, we will take quartile, the quartile one value and subtract 1.5 times the interquartile range. Uh, to find the upper fence, we'll take the upper quartile, quartile three, and add 1.5 times the interquartile range. And again, that's to see if our data, how spread out it is, and if we have any outliers. And outliers are, are data values that are significantly different than the majority of those, uh, those data values. Values that are less than lower fence, or greater than the upper fence could be considered outliers to your data set. Example 2.8, uh, we're gonna revisit our example 2.4 data. Uh, find the five number summary, uh, compute the interquartile range, and then determine if any of these values are outliers. Determine any of the values, yeah. Determine if any of the values are outliers. Uh, so, I'm nice, so I've already put these in order for us. And notice we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 total values. So if we're going to split these in half, uh, the halfway point is right here between the 110 and the 110. So that means our median is 110, also called quartile 2. Um, then, oh, the other thing is our minimum is over here. That's 85. That's the lowest value. Our maximum is over here. That is the 138, the very top. So we've got those. That's usually what I start with because minimum and maximum are the easiest and median is pretty easy to find. But now we're only going to consider these eight numbers. And so if you've got eight numbers, uh, you split them in half, that's going to be four and four. So 
our um, quartile one is going to be right there between 85 and 98. Notice it doesn't land on one of our values. So what we do in order to find quartile one is we take the average of those two numbers. So we're going to take average means you're going to take them and add them together, 98 plus 85, and then we'll divide by two to give us the average. So let me grab my calculator here, 98 plus 85 gives us 183, and then we're going to divide by two, and that will give us a quartile one value of 91.5. Notice these quartile values and even the median value do not have to be part of the data set. The minimum and, minimum and maximum do have to be, but the quartile values do not. So looking at the uh, upper set of data, let's just underline that in red. These are the eight numbers we're considering now, the ones that are above uh, that middle 110 spot. So again, we've got uh, a division right here. Four values below that, four values above that, um, and we get, if we figure that out, let me put our Q3 here. Uh, once again, we would normally have to take the average, but in this case, these two numbers are the same. We actually would have done the same thing on the median, but those two numbers were the same also. So 110 plus 110 divided by 2 gave us a median of 110. In this case, 115 plus 115 divided by 2 gives us a Q3 value of 115. So um, those values give us our uh, five number summary. Then to find our interquartile range, I'll put that up here, the IQR, we're going to take quartile 3, which is 115, minus quartile 1, which is 91.5. Oops. Let me fix that, 91.5. And I'm going to grab my calculator again so I don't make a silly mistake. So 115 minus 91.5, and we're going to get 23.5 is our interquartile range. Be down in the pack. Um, then we are going to... Uh, determine if there are any outliers, and to determine if there are any outliers, remember that we're going to take, uh, for the lower fence, we're going to take quartile 1, which is 91.5, minus 1.5 times the interquartile range, which is 23.5. And again, I'm going to grab my calculator and use this here. So 91.5 minus... 1.5 times 23.5, and we get 56.25. Notice that none of our values in our data set, since 85 is the lowest, none of them are lower than 56.25, so there are no outliers on the low end. To find the upper fence, we're going to take our third quartile, 115, and add the 1.5 times 23.5, the interquartile range. So 115 plus 1.5 times 23.5 is going to give us 150.25. And since our maximum value is 138, we would say in this case there are no outliers. So first of all, our five number summary is right here. Then we calculated our interquartile range up here. And finally, we were going to identify any outliers using our formula that we were given, and there are no outliers in this case. Now, steps on the graphing calculators. So hopefully you've uh, downloaded that app, or if you have your own calculator, that's fine. But the first thing that we're going to do is enter the raw data in the L1 list by pressing STAT and selecting number one and edit. Uh, then we're going to press, and I'm going to go through this process with you, um, but then we're going to press uh, stat and highlight the calc menu, calculate menu, and select number one for one variable statistics, one variable stats. Then uh, the third step, with that one variable stats appearing on our home screen, we're going to press second and the one key, and this will put in L1 because that's where 
we put our data in was L1, so we want to make sure it finds those statistics as they apply to L1, and then we press enter, and that will, uh, we'll have to go down the screen a little bit, but that will give us uh, that five number summary. So um, let's go back to this one, and actually I want to go back to the previous one and go through those steps just so that we've seen it on a graphing calculator as well. So when you're looking at your phone, you're going to see something similar to this, or if you're looking at the calculator, you're going to see something similar. And what we're going to do first is we're going to press the stat key, and we're going to select number one for edit. And if you're using a physical calculator, you might have to clear off your list. If you need help with that, ask me. If you're using the, the app, it should just be an empty L1 there. So we're just going to type these numbers in. So 85, there's four of those. So 485s, then we've got 298s, then we've got a 100, 110, four of those 110s, and then we've got three 115s, and two 138s. And notice that gives us 16 values. So we have entered all of those in. Hopefully I didn't make any typos when I was typing them in. And we're going to go, um, a lot of times I'll just quit, second quit. A lot of times I'll just quit, second quit. And then we'll go back to stat and over to the right with your arrow to calculate. And it's that very first option. We'll choose one variable stats. And notice for the list, it automatically has list one in there. So I don't even have to do anything. Um, if you needed to, again, you would push the second one button. We go to calculate and hit enter. And notice it's going to give us a whole bunch of stuff that we're not interested in yet. But what we want to look at is this stuff down at the bottom. So we're going to go down on our screen to uh, the bottom section. And notice it has the minimum value is uh, for X is 85. The quartile one value for our data is 91.5. The median is the 110. Quartile three is the 115. And the maximum value for those X's is 138. So it gives us all those values. From there, you would still have to calculate your inner quartile range and then determine if any of those were outliers. But that's the process we use on the calculator uh, to find that five number summary. Example 210, let's go back and look at uh, our example 117 that we had earlier, looking at the cumulative relative frequency column. So we are focusing in on this column right here. Uh, it says, determine the 78th and 34th uh, percentile. So the 78th percentile, remember, means... Seventy-eight percent of data values are less than um, this value. So, in our the reason they're having you look at the cumulative re relative frequency is this is basically giving us percentiles. We have eight percent of the data values are in that first group. 34% um, are in the first or second groups, 78% are first, second, or third, 92% uh, uh, and then 100%, or no, 98% and then 100%. Okay, so looking at this, uh, we have, I must have taken out one of these when I did it before because I think we only went up to four cars, but that's fine. Um, so anyway, the 78th percentile, this is the key right here, 78th percentile, and that means two cars, a value of two, is our 78th percentile. I'll just put a box around it. Then we're also asked to find the 34th percentile. And remember, that means that 34% of the data values are less than... Uh, or equal to, I should have this in here, or equal to that data value. And so looking at our list again, here's your 34%, and the 34th percentile is going to be 1. Then we go with the median. Where does the median lie? Well, the median, remember, separates the data into halves. 
So half the data will be above and half the data will be below. And so hopefully we can kind of understand that's going to be in this group right here. Um, you had 34%. Here you've got 78%. So the 50% is going to be in the middle. So the 50th, uh, or sorry, the median will be a 2. So the median will be a 2, and that would be your uh, middle value. So you've got all these zeros and 1s and 2s and 3s, 4s and 5s listed. The middle value, if you put them all or in order, is going to be a 2. Example 211, on a timed math test, the first quartile for the time it took to finish the exam was 35 minutes. Interpret the first quartile in context of this situation. Well, first quartile means 25% of the data is below and 75% is above. So uh, you could say the fastest 25% of test takers finished in 35 minutes or less. So again, in this case, it's all about context. The fastest 25% of the test takers finished in 35% or less. Example 212, taking the obtained data from our example 2.8 that we did, interpret the median. Median. Well, our median is 110. And remember, the middle score in our data set is a 110. That would be the median. And again, we didn't have any extra information from that. It was just a data set, so that would be the middle score. That is the end of section 2.3. You've got seven graded problems there. Uh, again, focusing on that five-number data, that five-number summary, um, medians, quartiles, and also the percentiles.